Thank you for staying with us. Now, the Boko Haram insurgency in Nigeria, which began in 2009, is still a security concern to the country, as it was reported just recently that the terrorist group ambushed and killed over 50 Nigerian soldiers. However, with the pandemic in view and with most countries bending over backwards to fight the virus, we wonder if half of the efforts being employed into fighting the virus was employed to fighting Boko Haram. Wouldn't it be history now? Wouldn't it be a past story? And wouldn't hundreds of soldiers still be alive? Now, for this conversation in the studio with me, still a security analyst and expert, Dixon Osage. Thank you, Dixon, for staying still with us. And joining us live by Skype is retired Air Vice Marshal Femi Badebo. Thank you, Air Vice Marshal, for joining us. Thank you for having me. The fight against Boko Haram has been going on now for about 11 years, and, and thousands have lost their lives to this. However, coronavirus seems to have taken the center stage since its emergence in February, and suddenly the government seems to be taking quick and visible steps. What can you say about this, Air Vice Marshal? Well, it's a welcome development, and I think that even the international community have commended us for what is happening. Um, unfortunately, it's not coordinated as it should be, because you see, while the federal government is coming up with some directives, some states used to be, seem to be coming out with their own counter directives. As a result, we now have a lockdown that um, is not quite nationwide. And I wish it was. Okay. Now, now do, do you believe the government is underestimating this menace? Um, the federal government is not underestimating. Lagos State is not underestimating. But I find that a lot of states who either have just one affected person so far um, um, or none at all seem to be underestimating it. And that's where the whole problem lies, because we have a free movement of people all over the country. And so someone who uh, is from a state where the laws are not being taken. You see, the way it's been taken now, we take the lockdown seriously and hopefully in 14 to 21 days we will be able to say effectively that it's clear in certain areas but as you can see while some states are taking the lockdown seriously some are starting there a week or two later some are not even talking about the lockdown for say and that should not be the case now uh, advice marshall COVID-19 seemed to have taken the center stage and many, many people are suddenly forgetting that we had a, a more palpable problem that was staring us all in the face, which is the issue of um, Boko Haram ISWAP insurgency. And, and there's been rumors that Turkey is supplying arms to the Boko Haram sect. What can you say concerning that? Uh, what can we say about rumors? One thing that is clear is that Boko Haram is operating from an inland area, no access to uh, what I'll say, to any port whatsoever, which means that everything they're using, the weapons, uh, even the foodstuff that they're, they're consuming, is coming from inland. It means some airfields in the northern part of, I mean, you know, outside Nigeria, of course, but in the northern parts, uh, is being used by with the collaboration or with the support of certain governments. And these things have been that. If you remember uh, recently, there was a video where there were over a hundred desert by motorbikes uh, that were being used by these chaps. These are not things that you pick up, you know, in the jungle. So obviously, people have been saying it for a long time. Um, some of our partners or our neighbors are not really our friends, and of course, there are some international. Uh, countries that for a long time have had a, a, a growing interest to see that Nigeria does not succeed as an African power, which we we really are. Uh, most African countries are looking up to us. Uh, some African countries are in the Francophone field. And while they are our neighbors, they're not really taking their orders from Nigeria. Uh, and so it's no, there's no doubt that some countries are, but exact countries, we will have to capture some weapons right. and see the brand labels to be able to say for sure 
or we'll have to get better intelligence from uh, certain sources uh, that are able to actually track the air, these aircrafts and track them to landing. I'm, uh, the, the, the technology is there. So it's just that, you know, the Western powers are not ready to work 100% with the Nigerian government. All right, all right. Dixon, I come to you now in the studio. Now, many people have said um, since the emergence of COVID-19, um, we've seen uh, different concerted efforts by, by the federal government, state government, I mean, um, private partnership, um, people coming to see how they can stop the spread and cop this virus. And we had a more palpable, and we still have a more palpable um, pandemic that, that was staring us all in the face, which was insurgency, Boko Haram and ISWAP <laughs> and, and killings. And that not so much, uh, as much as we do agree that the, these are two technical, uh, the technicalities involving both wars are pretty much different. Why are we not seeing that much effort in the fight against the insurgency, as we're seeing now against this pandemic? Thank you very much, uh, Benny Hawk. Uh, you see, uh, the Nigerian government has made a lot of mistakes. Uh, in the fight of these uh, insurgents. Uh, you know, uh, in, in the beginning, when this uh, opera sprang up in 2009, uh, they were so quick to send in the military, uh, thinking the military would go there, uh, dis de 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 disseminate these guys, uh, decimate these guys, and they wrap up the war and come back home. And it's taken the Nigerian Army, Nigerian Air Force, Nigerian Navy 10 years to fight some group of uh, criminal elements either in, the, in an inland or an island or in a territorial uh, space. Uh, we have failed to take our territorial behavior into accountability. Uh, we have failed to understand that uh, the Nigerian country uh, is, a, is a sovereign state and uh, we gambled with the states, you understand, you see? Uh, yes, I agree, we have a, a lot of conflict entrepreneurs uh, that never wanted this war to end. Uh, warlordism is one of the problems we have in just like uh, AVM has rightly stated that uh, we have no uh, quality intelligence to uh, try to track uh, how this guys are being funded and how these guys receive their arms and ammunition because uh, it will be very, very doubtful if these guys really uh, uses the normal nooks and uh, crannies in the Nigerian space to carry out this act. You know, I just want to call it your government space. You know, most of the uh, criminal activities that's taking place is in your government space. Yes. And uh, the military needs to understand that there are three strategies uh, they are supposed to adopt to ensure that this war goes to, uh, to, goes to bed, you know. Uh, they need to uh, try to delink the insurgents, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, try to delink their uh, employment methodology okay. and they try to demobilize the insurgent and de-resource the insurgent uh, because without resources they cannot strive. They are striving because they have the resources to strive. And in every given world there's what we call deception. You understand? Deception plays a very big role and that is why sometimes people want the Nigerian army to give account of how many soldiers were killed. If sometimes if you lost 100 soldiers you shouldn't come and tell the world you lost 100 soldiers. It's going to stand as a, it's going to stand as a motivational uh, factor to the fighting troops. So that's where deception comes to play. Information you... management right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, I think the Nigerian government made a mistake. And sometimes, uh, like a few years ago, they went and negotiated with the enemy. Uh, negotiating with the enemy is a sign of weakness. Uh, there is no place in the world like the Americans. They never negotiate with the enemy, even uh, in terrorism or kidnapping. It's a crime to negotiate with the enemy. But with giving the enemy the, uh, the, 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 the benefit of doubt that they can strike and get uh, us to negotiate with them. Now, AVM, a, a video of the head of Boko Haram pleading with his fighters to continue their fight while they were being besieged by Chadian armies was circulated a few days ago. They recorded an impressive win against the sect. Now, I wonder, is there a reason why Nigeria is still backward in its fight? Well, do you remember I said that certain countries, our neighbors, um, are not really supporting the Boko Haram insurgency fight? Uh, what happened in, um, in Chad is a situation where the uh, Nigerian army were able to push the Boko Haram fighters backwards. And in the process of moving backwards, uh, they, they, they ran into Chadian troops who were actually trying to stop them from moving into mainland uh, Chad. And in the process, you see, when you are a fighting force moving forward, you can contain a lot of things that you meet in front of you. But when you are a retreat, retreating army, you are retreating in a rat tag final way. And if you run into opposition like the Chadians, they can decimate you, which is what happened there. And uh, it appears there had been some agreement between, uh, you know, between Shekau and uh, the leadership in, in Chad. And this is where this whole problem is coming from. So we, we need to figure out exactly um, who is doing what and what we can do on our own. What this shows that is the Nigerian army have the capacity to pursue and to uh, deal with this 
uh, renegade forces. What happens, like you see, is like, up, unlike when they held land, when they held numerous local governments in the past, we have a situation now where they just come in, create some havoc, and then they disappear. So they're doing ambush tactics and all. It's not proper engagement like they did before. And that's a force that's difficult to contain. All right, ABM, just before I let you go now, um, by the time this pandemic blows over, um, we, we've, we've seen the temerity, the tenacity, the speed in which the federal government is using and reacting to this. Now, wouldn't you suggest that the same speed, temerity, and accuracy be employed in the fight against insurgency? That's why we know the pandemic is health-related. What would you advise? Well, you know, uh, the, the, the government has moved its speed uh, as far as uh, this pandemic is concerned, because what are you buying? You're buying medical equipment, you're setting up uh, isolation centers, and so on. But when you're dealing with forces like the Boko Haram, one thing I failed to mention earlier on is the fact that half of the troops are not really foreign to you. Your, 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 the border communities are actually, they actually inter, inter, inter uh, they live with each other, they, they, they trade with each other, and they actually, they, there's a similarity in their outlook. So, it, you know, when they also come, in, come into an area, it's not as if they're carrying 100 bags of rice to feed for the next few months. They move into the community and they get food off the land from the communities in which they settle and oppress. So um, it, it, it's, a, it's a situation that is not so easy to fight. It's not like if you take Nigerian troops now and take them to somewhere like East Africa, I'm telling you, go and ask anybody who, or any United Nations operations that Nigerian armed forces and even the police have been involved with, they've come back with commendation. But when you are fighting in an area where there are similarities within the people, so the informants and the spies are all move around you and you are not sure who it is. You can't just go out on out to start shelling and bombing a village. You, you, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yes, I So it's, it's, it's a difficult kind of battle. It's almost like fighting inland, fighting within the country and so on. Okay. All so right. uh, we just hope that. And then the weapons. Okay, sorry. The weapons. The weapons that you need. You see, like I said, you can get the medical equipment overnight. You can see Jack Ma flying in things from China and everything like that. Who, is, who has ever seen any plane load of... All right, retired AVM, Femi Badibot, thank you very much for joining us and for your contribution. And I'll come to you, Dixon, in the studio now. Um, Chad has claimed that Abubakar Shaka was killed by its army. However, there has been no authenticity of this. What is going on here exactly? And I need, I need some of your reaction to what the AVM did say while they were speaking earlier on. Yes, I, 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 I agree with the AVM, but I tend to disagree with the AVM on the area of uh, our Nigerian troops' uh, success in the uh, international community. Yes. Yes, they actually succeeded. But if uh, the international uh, uh, community, like uh, the uh, United Nations operations, have the same mentality with our own government and uh, leaders in this country, the Nigerian government, Nigerian military will go there and fail. You understand? Because there you have the uh, basic amenities, you have the basic infrastructure, and you have everything in process. And now, uh, we fail to understand something that, uh, just what we call the shell acronym. In any given war, uh, we have the software, we have the hardware, uh, we have the environment as well, and also we have the uh, uh, the hardware, the live way. Yeah. Uh, you, you see, uh, when you take Nigerian troops abroad to go and, uh, to go and uh, engage the enemy, the, the live way is more cutout for. The live way is the human being, the, yes. the, 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 the soldier. Because uh, most people feel that uh, weapons, arms, and ammunition bombardment will with, with neutralize the enemy. We must understand that uh, when it comes to uh, uh, security management, uh, it's not about enemy-centric. It's all about uh, population-centric. Uh, because if you want to take it as enemy-centric, you will kill till eternity. And uh, that's where ideology comes to play. Because yes. ideology is a war that could end, uh, that could take till eternity. Now, the reason why Nigerian troops go abroad and succeed is that whenever they go for any operation, maximum is nine months and maximum 12, 12 months and they are well, well they are well paid in dollars they are well catered for well respected and the morale is very high now bring that operational strategy to our own part of the country our soldiers spent four years in the battlefield spent three years in the battlefield they will fail that's an intentional error and it amazes me with all the shouts memos write-ups
jobs from security experts to the presidency to the government, they are still the Nigerian army, precisely the Nigerian army. Yes. Because we don't have that problem with the Nigerian Air Force and the Nigerian Navy. Because sometimes I threw a question to the army headquarters that, is it not the same parents that gave birth to the army, navy, and air force? Mm -hmm. Their uh, operational uh, thinking and the uh, application differs. Because I see no reason why you keep a soldier for four years. The battle begins from the mind, you understand? It, no matter the fact, no matter the case, when you give a soldier uh, the best weapon in the world, if his mind is not prepared, defeat is imminent. So let's not look at it from... If his uh, mind is not prepared, <laughs> defeat is imminent. Thank you very much, security expert Dixon Osage, for your wonderful contribution on thank Plus you, Politics Benny this Air. evening. Yeah. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take our Plus report now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us. The Plateau State government said the state will experience a total lockdown from 12 midnight on Thursday, April the 9th to 11 p.m. on Wednesday, April the 15th. The state governor, Simon Lalong, said the lockdown will enable the state to embark on a statewide fumigation exercise, which will cover all local government areas within the state. Lalong, while speaking to pressmen, said only staff on essential duties will be permitted to move around. We concluded plans to carry out a statewide fumigation exercise, which will cover just Buku Metropolis and all the 17 local government areas of the state. To this effect, I am directing a total lockdown, effective 12 midnight of Thursday, the 9th of April 2020, to 11 p.m. of Wednesday, 15 April 2020. During this period, there will be no movement of any kind, except for staff on essential duty. But as of today, we have up to 11 ventilators that are on ground in Plato State. For the data centers, fortunately, they say they are going to give us one. And if they are going to give us one, it's either going to be the last day, which is located in Plateau State Specialist Hospital. And here is my take. In Nigeria, the reported cases of insecurity, especially at this period, seems to be in a different dimension. Boko Haram terrorist sudden attack on the Nigerian army in which over 50 soldiers were reportedly killed may not be unconnected with the distraction caused by COVID-19 pandemic. Nigeria has been faced with lots of security challenges in recent times, mostly as a result of Boko Haram activities, both within the country and at our borders. Even as the fight against the dreaded invisible plague is ongoing, I believe the government should not relent in its effort in the fight against the visible enemy that is bent on grounded economic and social activities in the country. According to Global Conflict Tracker, more than 37,500 people have been killed since May 2011, and an estimate of 2.5 billion displaced people in the Lake Child Basin, and an estimated 244,000 of Nigerian refugees have been displaced by the insurgents. The Nigerian government has a more visible enemy to combat and overcome beyond COVID-19. The Nigerian government, as a matter of necessity, must employ every machinery within its arsenal and concerted efforts from all the stakeholders to put an end to the activities of these insurgents now and protect the life of its citizens, which is its foremost in its responsibilities. A desperate situation sometimes demands a desperate response. This is probably the situation the global community has found themselves, more especially with regard to containing the raging pandemic, and Nigeria is no exception. The government should carefully manage the situation with greater considerations for the population of the people living in extreme poverty who may be experiencing a double tragedy at the moment, not being able to go about their daily bread and being vulnerable to contracting the deadly COVID-19. Some crime studies have revealed that the fact that some people may be compelled to take crime as a means of survival, especially when faced with unpalatable situations or suppressed under certain harsh economic conditions. Even though there is no moral justification for crime in any society, the government should not be oblivious of the economic realities created by the outbreak of the coronavirus. Indeed, the times are uncertain, but the burden rests on the government to deal hope and repose confidence in its citizens of its ability to be on top of the matter and safeguard them by every means necessary. This is my take, and this has been Plus Politics, and thank you for staying with us. Join us again same time tomorrow. I am Benny Ark. Do have a good evening.